Hello, Internet. Uh, I'm here with another pet game update, and today I want to add achievements to the game because achievements are fun. Um, I'm only going to show you the basics of like recording them, like, you know, logging a player action such as feeding or exploring, um, you know, count, counting up, you know, oh, you did the 10 times, 100 times, 1000 times and giving you achievements for hitting those those milestones. Uh, as for displaying those achievements somewhere on like a profile page or something like that, I'm going to leave that up to you. Um, I don't know, maybe in a future video I can I can show that, but hopefully when you see how it's recorded and if you look at how pages like My House works, you can start to imagine how you might pull, pull in that information on what your achievements are, right? In the same way you say, I want to find this player's pets. You just say, I want to find this player's achievements and display them, right? This is a very similar kind of thing that we're doing. Um, but anyway, let's hop into making achievements. Um, I think the first thing we're going to want to do, this is the wrong code, <laughs> uh, my house. Yeah, so where we take these actions like feed or explore, um, we're going to want to, sorry, I did a jump to definition there with the keyboard shortcut. I shouldn't do that because you can't see what I'm doing. Um, but where we take this action, I now want to record some sort of stat, assuming that you succeeded, right? So um, in these cases, we would count it. But down here, we would say, cool, I want to count up the stat. Um, and again, when it crosses the threshold of either 10, 100, or 1,000, give you an achievement. Um, so I could start to write some code here. But I think how I'm going to start is make some um, some tables in the database to, to store this. So uh, and actually, let me just start up my um, database viewer if I was thinking about this more, I would already have it started up, but let me just, it doesn't take long. Editing, who needs it? Um, <laughs> honestly, I'm just too lazy. All right, so we can see, perfect, here's our database. We've got pets and players, that's it. But I want a new table to store uh, A, achievements, but B, the counting of the stats to, toward an achievement. Uh, and I would say in general for a game, it's great to just track all kinds of stats for everything. Um, anything that a player does, go ahead and log the stat, even if you don't know if you're going to do anything with it now, uh, because later you might want to add achievements, or maybe you just want to know. Maybe you're just curious, like, hey, how many players are, you know, interacting with this part of the site? Um, Google Analytics and things can give you that. But anyway, I guess what I'm saying is I'm going to log some stats, and you should feel free to expand on that and log as many stats as you like. So anyway, let's make the tables to do that. So uh, in the uh, table folder, uh, I'm going to add a new class to represent this new table. So if, you, if you've seen previous videos, you've kind of seen this before. But uh, long story short, uh, to add a new table to the database here, we first create a new uh, class to represent that table in all of its columns here in the code. So uh, let's make one for achievement. So, or, or, sorry, this will be a player achievement. So here we will log uh, which achievement a player has. And then I also want to make, you should just tell them not to ask me about this again. This is, never mind. That's another thing. <laughs> um, let's also do a player stat. So this would represent all the different stats that a player can get. And I've actually made copies of this elsewhere to, I don't know, I kind of figured this one out in advance because there are a lot of moving parts here. And I didn't want to spend a ton of time figuring out. So I've got uh, a copy of the completed code on another monitor. But don't look at that. Don't look at that. That's cheating. Okay, so let's make all the fields we'll need for these two things. So we're going to need to know which player it is. And I think I've talked about this before in another video, but required here just means that in the code, when I make a new player stat, you know, record to represent a row in the table, I want to require the developer, myself, to specify a player ID. I'm saying that is required. If you're making a new player stat, you got to give me the player ID. Otherwise, I don't know what, I, what I'm doing. <laughs> uh, that's a required field. Uh, and then we can do AI autocomplete is finishing it for me, but this is optional. This is just a reference to the player object, which could be handy depending on what you're doing. Uh, this is not required, um, <laughs> not even in this sense. You, you could just leave this whole line of code out. Um, but in general, you don't know what you're going to need in the future. So it's good to, uh, you know, whenever you have an, an ID referencing another table, just include another line for that same table. If you've done any framework stuff before this, this is all like super obvious to you. Um, I'm also going to want a stat like type, like what is the stat that we're recording? That's not a thing that exists yet. I'm going to make that. And then finally, we want some initial value and that should also be required. Uh, what is the, you know, the number one, two, three, four, this is what, where we'll be counting up 
every time they take a particular action. Um, if you wanted something a little more flexible, like suppose you wanted to store in stats like date information or more complex objects, there are ways you could do that. But for the purpose of this example, I'm just going to do numbers. By the way, um, you know, a more obvious type maybe would just be to say I want an integer. Uh, the reason I'm going with long is it's just bigger. I can store bigger numbers with it. Um, for the particular stats we're logging in this video, you would like an integer stores up to two billion or something. It, I don't know how long it would even take a player to feed a pet two billion times or explore two billion times. Uh, but maybe you want to store other things where the numbers are bigger, like you know, lifetime money spent or earned or something. And those numbers could over the years accumulate. So I'm just gonna go ahead and give it a long. Um, it takes up more space in the database, but like who cares? Space is cheap. Uh, I don't need this, <laughs> the AI is suggesting. What I do need is now an enum uh, to store these different stat types. So that'll do. Um, anything that you want to store a stat about, is it the number of times you fed a pet? Is it the number of times you, you know, I don't know, explored with a pet? Uh, I don't know, logged in, logged out, like whatever you want to record with the stats, I'm going to make a, a value in, in here in this enum to, to store it. So that's what this stat will will keep. Or did you feed a pet? Whatever. Uh, for this video, I'm just going to go with feed a pet. So that's all I'll add. But when you want to add more, add them here. All right. The other thing we're going to want is achievements. And it's going to be pretty similar. We're going to say, yo, it's got to be, there's got to be a player. <laughs> what, what is this achievement if it's not related to a player? Thank you, autocomplete. And yeah, that looks very reasonable. So this is, again, the AI is noticing what I just did and saying, I think I know what you're up to. And it's correct because the AI is so clever. Also, oh my goodness, it, you know what? I wonder if it's catching on to this because I already did it in another window. Um, but yes, this, these are the achievements I want. Did you feed 10 times, 100 times, 1,000 times? You might want to give these uh, other names that you display to the player, but I would say for those, that doesn't have to be the same. Like, keep this something that means something to you as a developer. Or did you feed 100 times, 10,000 times, whatever. And then when we go to display this to players, we can have a totally different name. And you might have, you know, a graphic and things. And there, there could be a lot of information associated with achievements. And you're not going to capture them all in the name here. So don't even worry about trying. This doesn't have to match the name you show to players. It's not going to match the image you show to players. Uh, you know, maybe there's like colors associated with your achievements based on rarity or something. There's a, a ton of other information you could have about achievements. Um, and this isn't the place to put them, I guess is what I'm saying. So I would keep this name to something that makes sense to you as a developer. What is this? How did you get this achievement? You got it for feeding 10 times. And then again, when, when you get to displaying it on the front end, you can call it, you know, hungry, I don't know, whatever. You know, I don't know. Master chef, you fed a thousand times, you know, whatever, whatever you want the name to be. Um, descriptions for achievements, as, you know, there's all kinds of other meta information you might have. Uh, but anyway, uh, moving on to the next step. Now that we've defined these tables, in order to get them in the database, the database has to know that they are things. Oh, also, sorry, I forgot an important step. Uh, these all have to inherit from pet game table. Um, this isn't a requirement of entity framework which I'm using. This is something I added uh, just for convenience. It adds an ID column. Uh, everything should have an ID column in a database. That's just like a good general rule. If you're ever designing a database from scratch, basically every table should have an ID that represents a unique key. And any framework is set up to understand when you have an ID. It's like, I know what that is. That's your unique identifier for the row because that's what we do in databases. So any framework will play nice with you if you do this. So it's, it's good to have. Um, so anyway, make sure to say, yes, this class is a pet game table, and then it will inherit this ID. Anyway, that's <laughs> should have done that earlier. Here's the thing I was saying that we, we really want to do is we need to tell the database, hey, this is a table that you have. Um, so we type that here, we will say player achievement. And this is player achievements and the AI autocomplete is going to figure this out. So this will become the name, right? As we see pets, players, that's pets and players, we're going to add player achievements, player stats, and we now have everything we need to um, get this in the database. Uh, so now we can ask any framework to do that for us. And we do that by making a migration. You've seen me do this before. So we say EF, uh, migrations add, and yeah, adding achievements will do. And this is going to generate the code. Oh, can't run this. This can't uh, build and run uh, migrations while the project is running. So if you ever um, try to build and it says, 
ah, I failed for some weird reason that doesn't make sense to you, it might be that your thing was running. <laughs> so just check that. Um, okay, now that's generated that migration, let's go and see what it looks like and make sure that it looks like what we want. Here we go. It took a second to catch on. So we're creating a player achievement table. Makes sense. Yeah, it's got columns that make sense to us. Creating player stats. Yeah, it makes sense. Um, some indexes on those tables. Sure. Don't worry too much about knowing exactly what all of this means, but it's good to check to make sure that's not doing something you totally didn't expect. Like if you saw in this migration that was, you know, it said uh, drop table player or something, you'd be like, whoa, what? Drop? Don't, don't drop that, you know, um, for the up migration. The, the down migration, by the way, just does the reverse of whatever the up did. So seeing that this part drops player achievements, that's not surprising. But if in this first part in the up, if you saw some weird surprising code, you might want to try again. You probably accidentally, you know, suppose you accidentally like deleted this line here, then maybe in the you'd see that and be like, what? Why is it dropping the pet table? And then you'd be like, oh, I accidentally deleted it, right? So anyway, check the migrations, make sure that the code looks roughly correct. And don't worry too much if you don't know what all these weird things mean. You know, we can see that it's all operating on player stats. So player achievements, that's what we expect. Um, yeah, that's right. Sorry, you don't have to run that to um, we can though. So I have set up pet games so that when you run the project, it will run this migration to get the database up to date. So you can just do that. You don't have to do anything more. But if you want to, uh, you can manually do it. So we would say database update. And that will um, whoops, I, I vote that will run uh, this migration here that actually then takes this you know, takes our code and makes makes the database. Uh, and if you don't know much about migrations and you're wondering like, why are we doing all this silly work? Why don't I just come into the database and do it manually? Um, it's for when you get to deploying to you know uh, some other machine on the internet, some server where you want other players to to run your game, rather than having to remember exactly what to do for the database and comparing every little thing and doing it manually. You just let this code do it for you. Um, it's also helpful if you are developing with you know other people, then they can just run the migrations and have all the work that you did without having, you know, a copy of your database to look at. So migrations are very useful. Um, it might seem like a little bit of work when it's just you and you haven't put this thing on the internet yet, but it's a really good thing to, you know, get familiar with. It's really useful. And if you, I don't know, get a job in programming or you've already got one, then yeah, it's, it's super useful. You, you need to know it <laughs> if you're doing C sharp stuff, uh, especially on the web. Anyway, uh, let's refresh here and see that it did what I expect. Looks like it did. We have player achievements. We have player stats. These are just alphabetical. So right, player A is before player S. Whatever, it's fine. Uh, but we can see it's got all the uh, rows and, or sorry, all the columns we want. The columns here are displayed as rows, just to be confusing. But here we go. Here, here are columns, and we've got player stats. Great. All right, let's start using them. We've got them in the database, but no code is actually hooked up to use these. I'm just gonna flip over to my. Um, to my code and, and see what I had set up. Yep, yep, I remember. Okay, so let's go back to my house. Where did it go? Here we go. Pages, my house. And this is where we have all this feeding logic. Now, I'm about to add more in here. Again, after we feed the pet, we want to do some extra work that logs a stat, um, checks for achievements, all this stuff. This is getting really, really big. And keeping it all here in the you know in your house page is going to get unwieldy like you know, as you add more actions this thing's going to end up like hundreds of hundreds of lines you're going to be scrolling through all the time you don't want to be in that situation um so what i'm going to do is pull all this out into another function almost all of it um that kind of handles all that logic so from the point of view of, of the house when you come in here in the future and you're coding the house you'll look at do feed and it will say make a database, now handle the feeding. Okay, done. And you don't have to worry about looking at all this stuff and you can just know, you know, it's easy to see what's happening. Uh, you say, oh, it says that it fed the pet and I just, I can tell, I'll show you, let's do it. <laughs> it might not make a ton of sense as I go, but um, I think in the end, it'll just make the code more readable and also make sure that we're better set up to log more stats and achievements without redoing the same kind of work over and over again. So I'm just trying to kind of get ahead of that. Um, so I'm going to put a thing in here in the functions folder. This is where we would put any kind of extra um, functions like feed, you know, any other stuff we want. Um, so let's make a, a whole class just to store all of our feeding functions. Um, and I'm going to make 
task here that feeds and well, let me set this up and then I'll, and I'll kind of tell you what I'm, what I'm, what I'm thinking here. So why, why am I doing the things the way I'm doing them? Not so long could I be. Okay, here's my thinking. And I've talked about this a little bit in previous videos. Um, the reason that we just pass in the pet here, and, or the, sorry, the pet's ID and not the whole pet object and modify it, you may have seen me, this was leading to a bug in a previous video, is we really want to make sure that whatever the player sees, even if it's like old data, maybe they have multiple tabs open, maybe they played on one computer but then played on their phone while they were away from home, got back home, didn't refresh the page, you know, they're seeing old data. You don't want the code here to operate on that old data. So we make sure in all of our code to get fresh, fresh from the database, what's the most recent data, um, don't trust what's currently on the page. We want the freshest, we want the freshest data to, to operate on and act on. Otherwise, we can get some weird results. And again, it's kind of hard to imagine what I'm talking about. If you, if you go back to the previous video or about fixing a, a big bad bug in the pet game, I talk a lot more about this and show the bug. It's very easy to reproduce if you, if you know how. Um, and leads to exploits and all sorts of bad things. People can cheat your game. So again, with that thinking in mind, what we really want to do, all this stuff, I think, what we really want to do is say, I'm going to get a connection to the database. I'm going to do whatever work I need to do. So this, we're going to say pet feeding uh, feed. All the work happens in there, and then we save with just one connection to the database. And we're not going to pass in the current player as we understand it or the current pet as we understand it, because again, that data could be stale. So we're just going to send in the pet ID, um, sorry, the database connection that we have, and then the player ID, which we can get here from player ID. Uh, which is, we had had that code kind of before here. Uh, it was also in the feed logic. Uh, and then what pet to operate on. So this is the minimal information. Oh, I need to wait that. This is the minimal information we need to perform a feeding operation. A connection to the database to go get some information, the player ID and the pet ID. And this is again why every table in your database should have an ID column. That is, an ID represents the minimum information you need to look things up and, and get actual real up-to-date data. Um, and that in mind, again, that's what we'll be passing around. I want, here's the minimum information you need, the player ID, not whatever the player has right now, not whatever you know, the pet has right now, just the ID to go look them up. Um, so let's go back into the speed action and I'll uh, go to implementation here. There we go, and paste in all this logic. Uh, so this is, yeah, this is a little confused. We don't have some using statements up here, but if we press Alt-Enter, or I think it's Control-Dot in Visual Studio, you can say I want to import the missing references, and that'll fix a lot of this stuff up. Now, showing the modals here is interesting. This is to alert, and you may remember this. I don't, yeah, we don't have it now. But when you feed a pet, right, it pops up and says, om nom nom, your pet has energy. Or if they're at max energy, we say, oops, already at max energy, can't do this. I've got a cat sitting on my lap now. Hopefully she doesn't interfere too much. <laughs> Hello, Mia. I think, you know, the, the concept here is maybe there's other ways that pets get fed. What if other players can feed um, your pets? Maybe you, you know, you add links. There are those kinds of games where you share a link to your pet and other people take an action on the pet and that's how you level it up, right? Maybe that's what you're going for. Um, I don't think we should make so many assumptions about what the person is, is viewing um, on the front end. Maybe, I don't know, I'm trying to think of like a good concise way to explain this, but um, there is a concept in programming, single responsibility, um, and that's really what we're going here. Like this function is responsible for feeding the pet, doing the database work, um, but the what you see on the page, that's for something else. So I, I think what I want to do here is this feed function will return the message, what happened, um, it's now X energy, it's already at max energy, the pet's not found. We'll just return that and we'll let the house, right? The house is the part where you're seeing stuff. We'll let the house decide to show an alert um, for that message. So let's change a little bit of that here. I'm gonna return pet not found. We're going to return pet already at max energy. And here we would return pet name is now at energy. Another reason to do this kind of thing, oh, and now we have to say this task, this feeding task returns a string, and this is how you specify it. It's giving a string. This is a string. Another reason 
to think about why this is a good idea rather than letting this thing pop open alerts is that in order for this function to open alerts, you would have to also pass in an alert. Um, again, we would like to pass in as little as possible to, to let this function go um, and do its thing. And that's kind of a general rule for writing any method, like the, the fewer dependencies it has on other things, the, the easier it is to debug, uh, the, more you, the more easy it will be to reuse the logic somewhere else. So tying up this function with having to display alerts just kind of complicates things. It would make it harder to test, harder to reuse. So, and that's why people say every function should have one responsibility, a single responsibility principle. Um, so yeah, so, so by not passing in, by not having this thing display alerts, it doesn't have to know how to display alerts, and that makes the function a little, a little leaner. Um, so I don't know, that's another reason you might say, you know, let's look at something this function is doing. If we can remove that from the function, then we'll make the function a little leaner, and that's a good thing. So we've, we've managed to accomplish that here. So let's go back out to my house now. And now we want to know the message. So we'll say message equals, here's the, or we can say like result message, right? So now we're going to call feed. It's going to give us a sort of message of what happened. And this thing will decide, um, hey, I want to, oh, wait, sorry. It's like a alert, Joe. Yeah, here we go. And we'll say result, and we'll have the result message. All right, let's run that and make sure that all works. I did a lot of changes. We still haven't done anything for stats, right? <laughs> you may have noticed we're not tracking any stats. We don't have achievements. Um, we've done a lot of work. Let's make sure it still works. So feed, tidbit is now at three energy, perfect. We can still explore. We haven't touched that, but I don't know, good to test. So, okay, energy is ticking up and down, great. This all still works. Um, result, tidbit is now eight energy. And when we're at 10, tidbit is already at max energy. Result is kind of a less fun name. We can make that a little more interesting. So I don't know, this is kind of extra credit. We don't have to do this, um, but we could return, right? Right now, all we return is the message, uh, but we could also return a title for the message. We can return two things. It's not hard to return two things. You would say, hey, I want to return two strings. And this is how you do it. Uh, you have to put them in parentheses and then you comma separate all the different things you want to return. You could return all kinds of things if you wanted. Um, but for our purposes, we'll have two strings. It is also helpful, it's optional, but helpful to name these things. And this is called a tuple. So if you want to Google about tuples in C Sharp and, and learn a little more. Um, but what we are conceptually returning is a title and a message. And again, put it in parentheses, and that identifies to C Sharp. Hey, you're repairing a pair, a set. Um, you can think of it as, I don't know, if you remember writing out graphs and you write coordinates, you'd put like X comma Y in parentheses. And that represents a you know combined chunk of data. There's an x and y coordinate. Now we're doing a similar thing here, and it's a similar notation. Use parentheses, title, comma, message. That's what we're that's what we're doing. Uh, now all these things are going to complain. Hey, you're not returning the right thing. And you do the same thing here. So we'll say, oops, and not found. And this will now be our title, and this is our message. Um, and again, kind of looks similar to x comma y or something. Um, so let's say this. I believe said oops as well. Um, you make it say whatever you want obviously, and then this said om nom nom. And all right, so now back at my house, it's going to be confused here because it says, hey, the alert show thing wants a string for that third parameter there. It says my, you know, this should be a message, but you've given me, right, saying, hey, you gave me a thing that's two things to a thing that wants one thing. What are you doing? Uh, so that's okay. We can say yes, 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 but this should be the title and this should be the message, right? The Again, if you want to think of like X and Y portion of a, of a coordinate, that's kind of what we're doing. We're saying, okay, get, grab the title out of that, grab the message out of that, and let's see that that works. Um, but I think that will work. I don't know. I, I didn't need to do that, but I don't know. I wanted, I felt bad having removed the, uh, the old message. So here we go. Feed. Oops. Tidbit's at max energy. Let's explore to use up some energy. Om nom nom. Tidbit's now 10 energy. All right. So now we really do have the original functionality, um, but we have just pulled everything into... Um, a function. And I, I want to do one more thing, and I'll kind of explain why. Again, for me, conceptually, this is one action. I'm getting a database connection, I'm feeding, and then I'm done. Um, you might wonder why not, right, you could pass the database factory to this function and let it make the database connection itself. I think it's more useful to pass in the database connection because you might want to do something else. Maybe you do I don't know, maybe there's like gain is some experience gaining thing that you call or something You're like pet experience, gain experience. Um, and you would really want to pass it the same database 
this is to prevent another kind of bug. Um, a really good example would be, what if you allow people to buy and sell uh, items, and right? there's an exchange of money, an exchange of items. You really, when you use Entity Framework and you say, hey, give me a database connection, right? This DB, you're saying, I need a connection to the database, and then we're gonna save. If you do everything once, one save action, one create database context, one save, then if any part fails, the whole thing fails. So again, let's say you're buying and selling items. Um, you really want it so that when you remove money from the player, you know, the first player, add money to the other player to represent the exchange of money, then change the ownership of an item or pet or something. You want either all that to succeed or none of it succeed. You don't want only part of it, right? You wouldn't want the money to be exchanged, but the pet not to be exchanged. And if you split things up, if you did like, two things and this was the gain and experience or something, then maybe this one succeeds, but then for whatever reason the database goes down or is overloaded or something and this part fails. And that's a situation where then one of the things you wanted to happened and then one didn't. And now you're in this weird situation where, you know, I don't know, in this case nothing bad would happen, but in the case of, again, trading items between players or something, you really don't want to like steal money but not give people, you know, what, what they expected. So as a general rule, I would say, just once, get a database connection, then do all your work, as many things as you want in here, and then do a save at the end, and that's it. And this is our unit. Um, so, so, so anyway, so that's why I've arranged the code that way, and I just wanted to pull this alert out of there to kind of just more indicate, like that's not part of it, right? We're not doing any database stuff here. This is the database work. Um, anyway, oh my goodness. Let's actually log some stats. That's what this is all for. Um, so after, we have um, given energy to the pet, or rather checked everything, right? The pet exists, the pet can gain energy. Aha, give them energy. Now we want to log something to say, um, give them some, you know, give the player the stat and maybe give them achievements as well. So I'm gonna make another function. <laughs> I'm gonna make a stat helper, another function class. And let's see, again, I've kind of done this to the side. All right, yeah, there's a lot of stuff that goes in here. I almost been tempted to pause, get this all in, and kind of run over it, because this is this is a little bigger. Again, this there's a lot of parts to this, um, you know, logging stats and logging achievements. So yeah, let me pause, and then I'll be back, and I'll kind of run over what all the code is. All right, I'm back, and definitely feel free, you know, if you're following along, feel free to pause. I'll scroll over this and, and type this stuff in, um, but I'll at least explain what's going on. So. Here's kind of our entry point in most cases. I want to increase a stat, right? As a developer, um, the player has fed their pet or gone on an adventure or taken some action that I want to log the stat. So this is going to be the function I would call. Again, I'll pass in a database, the same database connection as I'm using for whatever other actions are being taken. So it's all, again, an all or one situation. And then the minimal information we need, the player ID, minimal information to identify a player. And then what's the stat we're increasing and by how much? Um, in this case, for feeding pets, it's only, you're only going to tick it up one at a time. Um, but again, maybe you're logging, you know, how much total money a player has spent in the shop or something. And so you might want you need to pass in the whole amount of money spent or whatever. Um, so first thing, we've got this player stats table. We're going to find the stat that corresponds to that player. Uh, but it is possible that they've never taken this action before and a stat does not exist for them in the database. So, right, looking here, there are stats that a player could gain, but no one has any value for any stat. Um, sorry, let me maximize that. So we need to account for that. We need to account for the fact that we might not find a row. Um, so the first way we do that is we say first or default. There is just a first async, but that will crash if it doesn't find anything. First or default, we wanna find something or get nothing, null value here, um, if we didn't find the result. Uh, and then we're gonna get the old value. So this is a little bit of fun logic. What was the value before the increase? And the reason I wanna know that is I wanna know what was the old value and what was the new value? And did we pass a threshold? For example, you know, when you feed 10 times, then we wanna give you the achievements. We wanna know that the old value was less than 10 and the new value is at least 10, um, right? We can't just say if the value is more than 10 because that's gonna happen every time it's then <laughs> we, we want to know the old and, and new value so this will get the old value and we want to say well if they didn't have a row in the database right in the case here nothing here then the old value is functionally zero um, so if player stat is null then we do a zero else we do the value that's in the, the player stat the value being this column here 
Uh, then we'll say, and by the way, if we didn't find it, if the player stat was null, also here's some other work. We want to make it. We want to make a new um, row in the database to represent that player stat. So we say make a new player stat. Again, player ID, stat, and value are all required, if you recall. So if we go to uh, implementation, right? You've got to specify a player. You've got to specify a stat. You've got to specify the long. And if you forget, whoops, for some reason, so suppose you deleted that, you forgot to specify a player, it's going to complain to me. And that's very helpful. And that's why I made it required. I want the IDE to help me and say, no, I'm not going to build this code. You did it wrong. <laughs> you got to give me a player ID. Um, and then we tell the database, hey, add this new row, this new player stat. But otherwise, if we did find the player stat, then we can just increase the value. So this is the easy case. This is what we expect to happen most of the time um, once a player has, you know, log this stat at least once we're going to have we're going to have this value okay after that right when we call increase stat now we have this handy function we can call increase stat whenever we want um when we do that something else we want to do is check for achievements so now that we've incremented this value here's the database here's the player id here's the stat to think about it might be tied to achievement and then here's the old and new value so that we again can check did they pass some threshold and here's what that logic is and this is pretty I don't know, that above logic maybe was a little funky. I think this is a little more straightforward. We're just checking um, all of the possible combinations of things that could have happened. And to, I'm, again, I'm being a little forward thinking here. It is conceivable that you get multiple achievements at once. I don't know. Um, so I just wanted to account for that. So I'm going to have a new list of all the achievements you earned by, you know, you know when we did this check. And then we'll go ahead and, and check all of them. And, and maybe that's because you want like combination sort of achievements, right? Maybe there's something where, I don't know, if you both fed a pet a thousand times and did this other thing a thousand times, then you get like master pet carer or something. And so you've unlocked two achievements at once or whatever. Um, so I'm going to keep a list of achievements and we'll do, check all the conditions. And for every achievement you got, we're going to add that to the list of here's the achievements you earned. And then we'll return those out. Um, so check for achievements, returns a list of achievements, and this whole thing is going to do that. And we're going to use that later to display to the user, hey, here are the achievements you got by the action. In order to do that, they'll need to know the achievements that were earned by increasing the stat. So that's why that's there. Let's scroll back down. So you may have noticed this stuff, right? Here is if you got the achievement, then we add it to the list. So what's that about? Let's hop into that function. So here's where we say, hey, here's a player. Here's the commission, the database, here's the player, and here's the achievement I want them to gain. And here I'm just doing a little extra check just to be super duper sure that we don't double give someone an achievement. So we say, let's find, you know, the, an achievement from this table, player achievements, for the player, that particular achievement. If it doesn't, and that's, right, if it doesn't, it, sorry, this is, <laughs> we've got a double negative, so it confused me. If the player achievement isn't null, Therefore, it does exist. If you did find a row in here, then we just want to get out of here. And I'm going to return false to say you didn't get the achievement. Again, this should like never really happen. Um, but I just want to head off any p potential bugs of, you know, maybe I forgot and I called get achievement somewhere and I don't know. Or, you know, maybe there was a logic in here and I maybe I, I forgot this less than or something. So I just just in case, I want to be super duper sure and check and make sure we're, we're not going to give the player the achievement if it already exists. Technically, you could say this is optional to do, but I just want to be, I don't know, super duper sure. Because I don't have a guarantee when I call this in the future. Um, and I don't know, maybe you make other ways to get the same achievement or something. So whatever. Um, so this just does that check. If we already found, right, if we found that achievement already exists for that player, then say, you know, return false, get out of here. But if right? If that's not the case, if the achievement doesn't exist, then we will make it add it to the database. And then we'll return true to say, yes, they got the achievement. And that's what this if check is for. So we're saying if when we waited to get the achievement, and I mean, this is the same as saying if it equals true, but you don't, right? So you can see it colors it gray because my IDE is like, you don't have to say that. You can just remove that. Um, but, but that's what it functionally means. If it returned true, then we're going to add to the list. So I don't know, it's kind of crazy. So we start from the top here, we go all the way down, but then you can think of it as coming all the way back up as called get achievement. It said yes. We added to the list. We returned the list. The list, <laughs> all right, this is now here's a list of achievements. And then increase stat is going to return that list back out to whatever called increase stat. So let's go do that part. I haven't done that part yet. That's what pet feeding will do. And that's what's going to go right here. This line that I hadn't quite written, the thing that's 
that, that we really wanted to add, right? This is the whole thing. When you have got a pet, let's do this stuff. So let's call stat helper, uh, increase stat, and we're going to give it the database. We're going to give it the player ID, and we're going to give it the stat. Yep, here it is, stat type fed a pet, and we're going to increase it by one. And we need to await this because it's, again, it's a task that could take time. We don't know how long it's going to take. It's got database work to do. Um, but this is going to give us a list of achievements that were earned. So let's say earned achievements, right? That's what it returns. And you can see that when you hover it right. It's a task. It does some work and it returns a list of achievements. Great. So this gives us at least a list of achievements. And now we can add that to that met to this message at the end if we want. So let's do that. We'll say if the earned achievements, uh, let's say if there are, if there aren't any, not. So if there aren't any earned achievements, then we'll just return that. But if there are earned achievements, we're going to do more. Um, so this is interesting. Oh, and you earned the following achievements. I think it's, that's so funny. I think it really does remember what I typed. I think if I looked at my old, or sorry, where I did this before, we would see that same thing. But let's type it out ourselves. So we want the title to be, and we don't have to put this all on one line. It gets kind of long on one line. So we're definitely going to want the same title. Om nom nom. I don't know why it is indenting it that way. Yep. And then we're going to want the um, message. So yeah, let's do this part. Um, as before, so we'll say spent at this much energy, and then we're sure we'll say that funny thing. So, oh, and you earned the following achievements. Um, and then what's it doing here? Doing a string join. That's all fine. I can put this on the next line too, just to help. So, okay. I don't know. Technically, string interpolation maybe would be a little better. Don't worry about it. Uh, well, I don't know. Does it look funny? I don't know. Let's do this a little better. So, let's say list of achievements. We will do so. This says, well, yeah. What is this? What is this crazy code? Maybe you're not familiar. Um, so, earned achievements is a list of achievement types, uh, and we want to put them together in a string. And join means we're going to put this in between each one of those earned achievements. So, if you earned three achievements, it'll do achievement one, comma, space, achievement two, comma, blah blah blah. Um, and we're going to store that whole funny concatenate string into a list of achievements, and then. Here we can do, oops, we can say list of achievements. So there we go. That'll be a little more succinct, although that line is still quite long. Um, this little like line here in theory is kind of how long your line, I don't know, try, just try and keep your lines of code not too long. And so a lot of IDEs will do this like, hey, reminder, maybe make the, you know, your line of code a little shorter. So anyway, um, let's put an exclamation mark because that's very exciting news. All right. So Again, so just to recap, there is this increase stat that increases the stat, checks if you got any achievements, and then returns a list of achievements you've earned. If you didn't earn any, then we'll just say the normal thing. Otherwise, we're going to do a little more logic to kind of give you this nice message. And you could do something else. You know, maybe you want like a whole different thing to pop up with gold shinies and pictures and say, like, wow, you got the achievement, my goodness. Um, so maybe you would pop open a different alert or something. But for simplicity's sake, and because this video is probably getting quite long, yep, we're over 30 minutes, um, I'm going to just go over this. We'll just throw it in the message about feeding. Oh, when you earn the following achievement. Um, and let's say, woo, I don't know, change the title. All right, let's rerun and test this out. I'll try feeding my pet uh, 10 times. And let me check. I shouldn't have any stats, no achievements yet. So let's validate this all works. So I'm going to feed once. Oh, already at max energy. Okay, we're going to have to explore a few times. Um, blah, blah, blah. I'll just use up all two bits energy here. Oh, he's leveling up. <laughs> it takes me a couple of clicks. That's something I kind of like to fix. It's because it takes a while for that black fade effect to go away. That's whatever. Don't worry about it. All right, we're down to zero energy. Great. Let's try and feed the pet once. Now at three energy. So if we look at player stats, great. We can say I'm, a, I'm apparently player ID number two. And stat zero has a value of one. Maybe I should talk about that. Yeah, why does it say stat zero? And that is because if you look at the player stat here, um, this stat has, yeah, here, cool. You hover over it, it tells you. So the first one here is number zero. Um, you can also be explicit and say, oh, but it's a zero. So really what's going on behind the scenes in C sharp is enums always convert to integers kind of automatically. There is an important side effect to this. You shouldn't rearrange things. So if I were to put another stat first, then this one would have a value of zero and fed a pet would be one. 
which would mess up the data in my database, right? Because this just says stat zero, the, the zeroth stat in this list, which is about a pet. So when you use an enum in this way, make sure you never reorder it, or you're going to cause really weird things to happen. When you're again, when you're saving them in databases, um, and there are ways that you could instead store the name of fed a pet in the database, which is a little easier to read. Um, that trades one problem for another. Now you can rearrange them, but you can never rename them, right? If you renamed this fed a pet, um, I mean, you could rename it to feed pet, and it would still have a value of zero. So even though you renamed it here, the database doesn't care if it's a zero under the hood. Um, so anyway, there's trade offs to everything. Um, but yeah, important note don't change the order there. Uh, so anyway, all right, we fed once. Let's go ahead and feed the pet more times. And this is actually going to be a little bit cumbersome because I have to go through all the energy. Um, but let's see. Let's uh, see what we're at now. Three, feed a couple more times. I guess the easiest thing to do is just explore feed because um, we get three energy right every time. All right, what are we at now? We're up at eight. All right, so two more, and I should get an achievement. So let's watch carefully. So one, nom nom nom, at 10 energy. Let me just confirm. We're at nine. Let's explore and feed. Tib is now at 10 energy. Oh, and you earn the following achievement. Fed 10 times. <laughs> Not the best name for it. Um, but again, there are other ways to deal with this. So, you know, how would you, instead of showing this silly string, show something a little more human readable? Um, you can Google, I don't know, there are various ways. The easiest kind of way to do it um, would be to build up this string yourself. Gosh, I feel like I should talk. You know, maybe this is a topic for another video. Because um, there's a way I would like to do it that would be really nice and give you things I was saying like, oh, here's like a caller that's associated. Here's a title. Here's a description. You know, maybe a funny note like, wow, you sure do like feeding your pets or something when you get to a thousand. You know, any kind of accompanying data you want with, with the achievement. There is a way in my mind that would be convenient to kind of store all that. Um, but I think that's a topic for another video because this video is already, oh my gosh, past 40 minutes and I really want to keep these to 30. So yeah, we're going to have to leave it at that. The, this, these are the basics for getting an achievement. Um, and let's just, I don't know, validate one more time that, you know, we don't get it again when we're at 11, right? We didn't, we don't keep getting the achievement because we're greater than 10. We only got it the one time when we moved from nine to 10 or really any value less than 10 to any value 10 or, or greater. Um, so, so there you go. Now you can go crazy, make all your own achievements. Uh, and again, you know, you probably want to show all the achievements to a player and you could do that in a very similar way um, as you do with the pets where you make a new page, load up all the achievements, blah, 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 blah. Um, yeah, anyway, that's it. Thank you very much for watching. Um, <laughs> I've got many more videos on making pet game if you're interested. Uh, there's a playlist. I'll put a link in the description or maybe it's even somewhere on screen as we speak. Um, and if you have ideas for other videos you'd like to see, please definitely let me know. I think the next video will be about allowing players to customize the appearance of their pets even more by overlaying different graphics, like a sparkle effect underneath or, or other things like that, or textures on top. So I think that's what I'm going to do for the next video. But, but yes, yeah, certainly if you've got other ideas, let me know. I'd love to know. And oh my goodness, if you ever publish a pet game or any other game, maybe a pet game, I would really love to know. So feel free to let me know about that as well. Um, anyway, thanks again and goodbye.